Roman Abramovich has been sanctioned now by the UK government as part of attempts to crack down on wealthy Russians with assets in the country. For more of us, we're now joined uh, by the Associated Press, Rob Harris, who's covering this. Rob, a very good morning. Good morning, Rob. Good morning. Good morning. Rob, is this a big surprise or is it only a matter of time? Well, there'd been such a build-up to this potentially happening. The fact that MPs in the Commons had been calling for Abramovich to be sanctioned. The, in the PMQs last Wednesday, we heard Kian Starmer asking Boris Johnson, why hasn't Roman Abramovich been sanctioned yet? And now it has come and places the club in a lot of limbo. Mm, That's well, what I was going to ask yeah. you, Rob. If I may, what would the, the ongoing effects be on the sale of Chelsea and, and indeed the current state of the club? Well, we have been hearing from Nadine Doris, the culture secretary, in the last few minutes, and she's saying that uh, to ensure the club can continue to compete and operate, we're issuing a special licence that will allow fixtures to be fulfilled, staff to be paid, and existing ticket holders to attend matches, while crucially depriving Abramovich of benefiting from his ownership of the club. And she is talking about ensuring that the, the club isn't harmed, but saying it will obviously have a direct impact. And she went on to say that it will bring some uncertainty, but the government will work with the league and clubs to ensure football is being played while ensuring sanctions hit those intended. And obviously this comes at a time when Abramovich is trying to sell the club. It was only a week or so ago he made that announcement. Also, Rob, so this is the big news this morning, but, you know, I, I wonder... Uh, it's a precarious position that Everton are in at the moment as well. And we know Mr Usmanov, some, uh, we don't know to what extent his involvement is there, but is that going to put, it could put Everton's plans, new ground, new stadium on hold? Yeah, well, obviously his sponsorship ended last week. Everton suspended their sponsorship with Usmanov's companies. So they almost got ahead of anything potentially happening down the line. It does pose... Obviously, funding issues potentially for how they do fund the stadium. He had paid £30 million just for the rights to potentially get involved in the naming rights. But uh, <clears throat> it just shows just how you know, far-reaching the financial consequences of this ongoing war are. And uh, the fact is, particularly now with Chelsea, Abramovich listed in quite some detail on a government sanctions announcement today listing his various dealings with the Russian state and just why they feel he's someone who needs to be targeted as we're watching and most important member these atrocities and th these Ukrainians who are dying in these mm. Russian military strikes. Clearly Rob that's, um, that yeah, just say, oh, that's, that's the most important thing uh, and, and the whole the whole issue here but move, looking at Chelsea in, in, in terms of a potential sale could a potential Buyer, maybe look on this as maybe Abramovich been a little bit weaker. Well, it does create huge questions for this uh, sale process because, <clears throat> as we remember from last week, Abramovich said he wasn't going to keep the proceeds of the sale himself. He wasn't going to be calling in the one and a half billion pounds of debt as he saw it. But he did say he wanted to create a foundation with the proceeds of the sales. So that would still be going to an entity he was involved with and mm -hmm. something giving him some status in the years going ahead. This action would sort of lead to indicate that, Chil that the government is not wanting the cash in any way to sort of go out of the club, any sale to benefit any anyone or anything linked to Abramovich. And... Obviously, th there will be uncertainty, but I, I think as it stands now, the, pro the sale process will be in a lot of doubt. Uh, Chelsea had been indicating that the upcoming Tuesday was the deadline for initial bids to be submitted. Yeah. And we've seen l so many people sort of putting their names in the frame and yeah. sort of saying Feels they are so, uh, yeah. hope hoping to uh, potentially bid. But uh, this does create a lot of uncertainty after what... And, 19 years where Bromovich has uh, sort of transformed English football with his, all of his investment. Rob, what do these sanctions actually mean, though? Well, it does place limits on his ability to do business and for people to benefit from that. Um, it, just looking through the list at the moment, it, it's talking about all his various deals that he's been involved with in terms of the Russian government and his close ties to the Russian government, and it states very clearly in this uh, government document that 
Abramovich is or has been involved in obtaining a benefit from or supporting the government um, of Russia. And, you know, th this is why that they believe that effectively he needs to be sort of placed on hold in terms of um, doing business in this country. Sure. Uh, Rob, there's a tweet from Martin Ziegler. I'll come out with that in the moment, the Times Chief Sports Reporter. But I need to ask you, is there some, you know, Premier League, have they now really got to look at fit and proper persons? No one realised what was going to happen, but at the end of the day, surely the, the, these tests are not stringent enough. Who buys our Premier League football clubs? Well, and there were some doubts raised back in 2003. I think it was the former sports minister, Tony Banks, who's even a Chelsea fan who was raising questions back then. And we've had the Newcastle takeover more recently as well, raising doubts over the the rigour in the Premier League's test, particularly around human rights. And you know, ultimately, this is the consequence yeah. that can be. Chelsea fans will save her the last two decades almost of titles, the fact they're European and world champions at the moment. But within all that, you know, it's how much you can accept how the money has been sourced, where the money is coming from. Obviously, Abramovich has denied, um, particularly uh, you know, following orders in any way from Vladimir Putin or trying to distance himself at times from him, despite the fact that they have obviously been seen together at events. I saw them together at the World Cup vote in 2010 when Russia was awarded the right to, to host the 2018 mm. World Cup and Putin did reference him uh, in the press conference that was held then but uh, yeah this will raise so many further questions that were brought out from the fan-led review that Tracy Crouch obviously conducted in the last year about ensuring there were, there were rigorous checks on who is coming into English football where the money is coming from as much as possible, as much as a, as a football institution can investigate. So, um, Rob, just back to Martin Ziegler. This is what he has tweeted, and this is the Times chief sports reporter. Uh, Roman Abramovich sanctioned all UK assets frozen. Chelsea can still operate under a special licence, but sale now on hold. Club will not be allowed to sell any more tickets. Only season ticket holders can go to games for the foreseeable future. Yeah, so, I mean, this this limits the ability for people to do business with Chelsea, yeah. as, um, let alone as a football club, as a business, because effectively it is freezing this huge asset. And if people were to be buying tickets, then that's more money coming in. And it reads and like, and obviously I'm trying to gather this information while onto you as well, that it's just allowing it to continue as a going concern as a business as best as possible to not damage the club itself and to ensure it has a long-term future, but without necessarily um, such new sources of cash coming in. And, and because, because it's a sanctioned entity, someone like me or you putting money into it would be, would, would, you know, would be potentially in breach of the law. Well, it's fascinating, Ali and Gab and Rob, I believe uh, Chelsea are around 28,000 season ticket holders, mm -hmm. I believe. Well, the stadium holds 41. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So what about the other 13,000? Yeah, I mean, th that is... Uh, I mean, th this will create a lot of concern, not only, of course, for the Chelsea fans, but all the staff as well, the staff beyond the match, beyond the players, the match day staff, the staff around the stadium. And you know, it obviously places the government in a challenging situation in terms of uh, how it oversees this process. I mean, what, what about buying seen... players as well, Rob? Surely that won't be able to happen, will it? Yeah, I mean, it looks like that the government is trying to do things that maintain the ongoing running of the club. If we think back even into different scenarios with financial crises where the government has effectively taken over runnings of trains or banks back in 2008. Um, there are situations where the government does have to get involved in uh, private companies. And the, the fact I think Nadine Doris is recognising today as culture secretary of the important role of football clubs as a community, place in the community shows that they're not there just to try to in some way uh, damage the club in terms of preventing it having any long-term future. Their aim is to ensure that it's Abramovich himself who is the one who is um, is targeted and you know the, the fact she talks about in her statement we're committed to protecting these football clubs seeing them as cultural assets in the bedrock of our communities but 
She says the priority is holding those who've enabled the Putin regime to account. And that's why she sort of says there will be this direct link on Chelsea. Uh, obviously, there's, there's so much uncertainty to try to wade through trying to actually um, work out. And let's remember that Abram Abramovich has never actually publicly condemned the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Uh, there was a statement that did reference the war and the victims when announcing the sale, but not directly himself, as he chosen to publicly um, call out or send a message to Russia or, or the regime of Putin. Rob, how difficult actually is it to implement the whole thing that is, so that he's not seen to be making any profit at all? I'm thinking silly things like that you, that you take for granted, like food bars within the stadium for 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 the the, the season ticket holders to go and buy a I don't know a, a hot dog or go and get a pint or go and get a Coca Cola, whatever it may be. I mean, surely that that in itself would be, it'll, it'll be making profit from that as well. Well, exactly. That these are all the uh, the ramifications of this as well, and it just raises huge questions over just what can be done around the club. Um, Abramovich had actually been back in the country uh, a couple of times last year, at least. But I was surprised to bump into him face-to-face -face at Stamford Bridge back in uh, November. But it does, I think, need, need, need to lead a lot of questions for the government to answer to fans in particular in terms of just how how games can go ahead exactly yeah. and obviously they're saying they are going to continue these games but um, there will be wariness of even sponsors as well in terms of their, their association increasingly now um, with Chelsea as a football club and whether it's the government that tries to oversee a sale where the proceeds of that sale might go to as well and uh, you know whether there's any challenges over this uh, entire process I mean it's obviously something we haven't quite seen yeah. with a football club <clears throat> before I could think back to when Manchester City was owned by Saxon Shinawatra in 2008 uh, at the time it was believed there was some pressure from the Premier League on Shinawatra to actually sell the club because of concerns from human rights groups about his involvement uh, in Thailand and ultimately that did lead to the, the Sheikh Mansour takeover of Manchester City which created uh, further questions of course about that source of yeah. um, mm -hmm. money too but it, it, it just shows how the Premier League being a, such a global player does create uh, challenging issues like this in terms of its, uh, its far reach to the world to try to bring in investment. What about, we're getting a few tweets in, what about away fans? Attending games at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, that is that is another uh, issue too. The fact that the indications to the government being restrictions on new tickets being bought, and that would create a, you know, a fairness matter as well in terms of the stadium. Well, Rob, you can't let away fans in if, if normal Chelsea fans who are not season ticket holders mm. buy a ticket as a Chelsea supporter. If they're not allowed in, how can you allow away fans in? Well, exactly. Uh, it, it, it does create huge potential issues that you feel the government will be sort of needing to sort of run through and try to settle in some way, uh, effectively ensuring that it's not Chelsea benefiting yeah. from this financially, the fact the club isn't receiving the revenue. And it really is something that we're not necessarily used to be um, working out and trying to sort of navigate when it comes to involving a football club. It, it, you know, these sorts of things are something we've never actually encountered in such a way before like this. Yeah. And, you know, you know, the main thing is all the uncertainty. And it's been pointed out, actually, today is uh, the, the, the date of Chelsea's birth, 10th of March wow. 1905 as well, that this is all uh, unfolded on. So, yeah, an, an incredible yeah. moment on their uh, 117th birthday. Rob, brilliant. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Big style. Rob Harris there from the Associated Press. Reminder of the breaking news right here on TalkSport. Roman Abramovich has been sanctioned by the UK government as part of attempts to crack down on wealthy Russians with assets in the country. TalkSport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.